and I never got them working as, as I wanted to, so they are being removed again. They will be repurposed as LEDs for lights for my videos recordings instead. As you can see here, I am picking out all the cables and all the trash. White LEDs, it works okay, but I was not happy with it, so I scrapped it rather quickly. But that means that we have some part of the cables already done. And that's really good, because we can use this to power the system. But we still need to uh, wire up the second cable. As you can see, there are quite a lot of more LEDs on the old one. But the new LEDs are a lot brighter. But we are aiming for roughly the same length. That should be 18 LEDs, I think. So let's see. So 18 LEDs. So now I'm basically preparing all the lead strips as it's going into the stairs. Uh, they are 15 in count and I bought a whole roll of 5 meters and I think I used roughly 8 meters in total. For signal wires I'm using a CAT5 cable, a network cable. Uh, I have tons of them so it's just a matter of splitting it open and repurposing the inside. Checking out the length so it fits under the stairs and as you can see the, the length of the lattice itself is roughly the same as uh, the mats that are on the stairs. I'm now fixing the wires that is going to be attached to the LEDs. Uh, on the first one I need three wires, the power positive and the power negative and then the data line. So what I'm doing is just pre-soldering everything up so they are ready to go. And after I solder the first side, uh, th the right side of the LED strips have data out. So I need to prepare the data out going to the next step as well. Uh, before that I have drilled a hole into the stairs where the data line is going into. The thing is when I attached this data line I saw that I broke uh, the, the cable itself rather quickly. And I started to actually add some hot glue on the ends to make the cable or the wire a little bit, bit more sturdy against me pulling on it. The reason for that is that the lead strip itself, soldering on the lead strip itself, is a little bit fragile. Second stair, uh, the data line comes in and the power line comes in and I'm soldering them to the next lead strip. This is basically what I am doing on each and every one of the stairs all the way up. Luckily I have pre-drilled and actually inserted all those wires when I repaired or did this uh, place in the house a couple of years back. And that makes it a little bit easier to get to them. And preparing the next step, the data line and some hot glue on the wire to keep it in check. And then I'm attaching the lead strip to the stairs itself, uh, just making sure that everything stick properly. Before you do that, make sure to clean the stairs uh, good, otherwise this may not stick as it should. Data line going in, and uh, this data line is then for the next stairs. I started to prepare the power part of this LED stairs. And I'm using a 5 volt regulator DC, AC to DC converter. Uh, this one I will link in down below. Uh, it's a 20 amp uh, converter and should be more than enough to power those LED strips. I already have power under the stairs since before. Uh, those to control some of the lights. Uh, they are running on Z-Wave and I'm actually going to switch that out to Sonoff as well. To the new stairs I'm actually using a Sonoff to have it to be able to shut it on and off externally as well. Uh, so what I'm doing now is contacting the wire going from the first stair. That one have power and it also have the data line. So I am actually adding a DuPont connector 
Uh, I'm linking in tools and gear for that as well. The DuPont connector makes it very easy to just uh, push it onto the pins on the ESP8266 that you can see to the right. Um, it's a little bit tricky in the beginning to add those type of connectors, but when you learn it, it goes really quickly. And especially towards those network cables, they work really, really well. It's now time to prepare and the vast majority of the wires coming from the stairs. And what I'm doing now is just scaling them off and making sure that I have all the power connectors or the power wires itself hooked together because all of those will be in parallel hooked up to the power supply. I'm also picking out all the rest of the data lines, making sure that I can hook them up to uh, the, the ESP itself. It's now time to add one of the peer sensors. This is the bottom sensor. So I'm actually drilling a hole into the side where this will be mounted. Um, this, this side of the stairs will of course be recovered and repainted later on. Here I'm preparing the peer sensor itself for soldering and adding the wires to it. The peer sensor is very very small and you cannot set any variables on it. But this one is perfect for the stairs itself since I have the logic in the ESP8266. Uh, I'm pulling the cables through. As you can see, I'm only pulling the cables through a little bit. And that's because I need to go in and chisel out some part of the wood. The peer sensor itself uh, will be added with some hot glue inside. And then will, there will be a 3D printed part on the outside. <laughs> pulling through the data wire or the wires for the peer sensor. Here you can see the wires coming through. There is not much space here. So I mounted the PSU on the wall and I'm going to tidy all the cables together. Unfortunately, it's very dark inside. And now I'm trying to test out the peer sensors. So let's mount the second one a little bit quick. I'm using more DuPont connectors. It's just a matter of uh, clamping them into place and then uh, pushing the, the protection on top of it, the black plastic shell. In this case I have three or I need three of them because I have the voltage to the peer sensor, the ground and the sense data line. When standing and watching the stairs itself, you can actually see the LEDs. Uh, and what I'm doing now, I'm using normal cable uh, channels and mounting them in front of the LEDs. And that actually hides them a bit. And that's a good thing. Uh, more hot glue just to keep the wire in place. I think this is very easy to work with and it should not be a problem to hold them up. So basically what I did here added a little bit of a tube from something and we need to have something here that actually kind of blocks out the passage here because we have a door uh, going back and forth. So if we take this one here it's quite perfect, wrong color though and we need to do something that blocks from the top down here. First of all, I don't need this length, and I think I just need a little bit. So let's cut this in half. And this will of course be replaced later on with a proper 3D printer part, but I need something to test the functionality first. And a good mock-up like this one is actually perfect and hot glue is perfect because it's easy to remove later on. Bottom up actually fades in in four steps. So that's why that one looks a little bit different comparing to top down. Though this is just code so you can change it to whatever you like and however you like. 
Uh, I am going to continue to actually update the code itself, but currently I, I haven't had the time to do it. And uh, top down is actually randomizing the, the color a little bit. As you can see, it gets a little bit different from time to time. I'm now mounting a small box for the ESP8266 and the gear and that just to keep it together for now. There you have it guys, the installation of the electrics is partly done. I need another case for the cables here, to tie that all in. I did add that one there it's not that nice in, in terms of the wiring on the outside i'm thinking of redoing that totally adding another case or something to bundle everything here into the same case that would be ideal but that's not for today's story i'm pretty happy with it it works and it seems to be very reliant after using this for a couple of weeks now so let us take a look at the code in front of you, you can see the code and I have included two libraries. First of all, I have the MQTT library that is containing also the PubSub client and that's because I want to integrate a couple of MQTT functionality like setting colors, setting the mood and even sending status back to my server. For instance, if someone is walking in the stairs that could potentially actually light up the lights in the hallways depending on the time of the day. Of course, I have the Adafruit NeoPixel library, and that is to make sure that the light works. I defined the actual pins that I'm using the peer sensors on, and I'm defining what pin the analog uh, light sensor is on as well. Uh, then I add a couple of more variables and I also define the number of stairs that I have in my stairwell, including the number of pixels in total. By having those, the system then count up and make sure you have the number of pixels per stair. I then set everything up. Of course, I have debugging on the serial port. I enable and set up the uh, HTTP web updater and the debug messages to the web itself. And this is a neat little functionality you get with the ESP MQTT client. I also set a couple of other variables for the um, actual pin modes for the alarms from the peer sensors and then I set the brightness on the LED strip to 90%. This can of course be changed and that is what I'm trying and wanting to change based on the light on the outside later on. I connect to the MQTT for a test and that's nothing more than that. I have the, the functionality for setting bottom up and top down and what it does it sets the light itself depending on what's going on and at the first one you can see that I randomized the color itself and on the second one I have set it to full brightness warm white. The last variable here is actually delay time and that is set to 100 milliseconds currently. I have a check interrupt functionality that checks what's going on and if, if we're going to do something. I also have the function, functions for actually enabling the setting the colors. This is for the color wipe up and this is the simple one. It only walks through each of the stairs and sets the color and then shows the color. The other one that went from the bottom up, that one actually fades in the color by setting each stair in different stages where the first one is half the color setting, the next one is one fifth and the last one is one fortieth. This does not really relate to the brightness but it works okay at least. And the power off as well. In the loop later on I check for alarms from the peer sensor if something has happened and I also get the value for the analog light sensor. I have some debugging currently left and that's just so I can see what's going on. I make sure to check what's going on here and if we have anything that is triggered we go in and make sure that we either go down up or top down and light up the lights itself. 
if we need to and the timeout is over we also go in and i can see that i change something um, we go in and disable or shuts down the color again after four seconds plus two seconds as this is a timeout on the peer sensors this is something that you can change based on your behavior and what you want